It's the 27th of November 2018. I'm David Griffin. I'm here at the Hardwick Inn and I'm talking to Bob Davis and Phil Matthews. Gents, thanks once again. You're both from Blackpool Colliery Cricket Club and uh, we're currently sharing this room. We've been crossed. Yeah, we are. Uh, yeah. Just come in. Not been able to persuade. His latest the, uh, release. <laughs> yes, we've not been able to persuade the, the staff here at the Harvick Inn to turn the, uh, turn the music down or off. So um, we, we've got to speak loudly. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> turning it off into it, it turns it off everywhere in the pub. Yes. <laughs> so, so never mind. At least it's a nice festive. At least you'll know what time of year we did. Indeed. <laughs> and the Christmas tree in the background probably. Oh yeah. Well, well, yeah. Okay. Um, you could scan round the room <laughs> and these uh, what, whatever you call. It's them. very festive, yeah. certainly. Anyway, um, yeah. this is our second interview, and the first one we talked a lot about the uh, origins yeah. of the club and, and goes back to the 19th century. But I'm interested in, in your involvement. So if I start with you, Bob, when did you first pick a cricket bat up? No, it wasn't at Gladwell, because I come from Shirebrook. And, that, and <laughs> that probably... Well, my, my, dad, my, dad had, my dad played cricket, and, and his dad played cricket. So it's sort of in the blood to some degree. Where were they playing? Uh, oh, my granddad came from Staffordshire, so I was right. somewhere over there. Uh, my dad, obviously born and bred in Shirebrook, he played in he played in Shirebrook. Uh, other than when he went away, yeah. mm. he was in RAF during the uh, during the war. Um, so I I first picked up a cricket bat. These photographs of me when I was sort of two years old yeah. with a cricket bat. So it, it was second nature to me. I played cricket. Was this from, going to watch your dad? Yeah, yeah. I used to go and watch him. Uh, I mean, but by the time I'm talking now mid 50s yeah um, they used to have a a bus for the away mm. away games they had a, an agreement with one of the local bus firms Truman's was the it's where um, that furniture place is now that used to be Truman's garage oh, yeah. but it was Top Cat Top Cat in Charbrook yeah. that used to be Truman's garage mm. we used to borrow a, a double decker there that many people went we needed this a double decker this is just for a club cricket game for a club cricket game following Shirebrook following Shirebrook in, in division I don't know 1D mm. of the basketball yeah. so the team would travel on it the team would go and, on it and, and, the or, and the wives kids dogs and cats well, you know what a right day out tremendous you know. I didn't right. get that much from Shelburne. Did you go straight to the game or did you have a... Oh, we, we used to stop off coming back right. at every pub between where they were <laughs> and where we were going. And it didn't matter whether, as a kid, you were laid on the back, completely tated, squawking your eyeballs out. If they were a pub, that's when they stopped and went in. And was so, there any drinking before games? Because I know now you turn up at a game and everybody's night. practicing and <laughs> doing the warm ups and stuff. Uh, but I heard a great tale from, I forget which club it was now, but they said that they used to do the toss in the pub because the, whoever uh, they played they did tour of it. So they've they done that on tour, yeah. yeah, <laughs> yeah, the yeah. In the pub. I can't recall that ever uh, happening. But but so so uh, they, they lend you a driver as well, presumably? Yeah, he, he uh, was the first one into the pub and the last one out. Marvellous. You're yeah, completely K like well, with Tommy Goss. That's the first time I've heard of that kind of <laughs> operation. I, I, to be honest, I don't recall. I mean, they must have done because nobody had a car. No. Yeah. There were very few cars. I was tell, telling my grandkids a few weeks ago, we were out in the back roads around and about Blackmore on the way over towards Shirebrook. When we were kids, we used to go walking with dogs and younger brothers and siblings on yeah. little trike <laughs> and you never even yeah, looked yeah, behind yeah, you they were ne yeah. you never saw a car yeah, yeah. they were tarmac roads obviously but yeah. you never saw a car from and one week point, to the next and at what point did you we played at school sorry Bob. I played at school, played at school as well yeah and I also when I was about and I played for, for Glackwell under 15s because I was at school with people who came from Glackwell yeah. and Shirebrook didn't have a youth squad a youth set up so I played I played at Glatwell as a under 15 year old and I played, I also used to play at bowls over in a similar yeah. similar vein. Well, I'll just, pause, I'll just pause it there because we, before we get to your adult cricket and your, your working life. So, Phil, what was your so my, start of So I started of actually playing at the back of Hardwick Hall up here. Really? Uh, playing for Hardwick Estates. So my, my dad used to play for Glatwell 
but he also played for Hardwick on Sunday's in friendly environments. And what age were you playing? So, like, my first game I actually played when I was eight, and I remember right. going on and fielding for my dad because he pulled a muscle. Right. And I caught three that day. What were you wearing? <laughs> Did you have any kids? No, no, I just had training sure, boxes and everything. Yeah. 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 And where would this have been? What, what year? So that was uh, early 70s. Right. And I remember going on and catching these. Uh, and I, I, I had a good set of hands all my, all my life to be honest. Eight years of age. Uh, and just played and just went on and fielded. But then I started playing properly for them when I was about 12. Right. Then I went to Glatwell when I was about 16. So I'd got the dilemma. So I'd got one of our famous people, Bill Berkhamshaw, who was lived up the road from me on, in Glatwell, who wanted me to come and play at Glatwell. And my next door neighbour who played for balls over. I wanted me to go and play at balls over. Yeah. So, but I ended up going to Glatwell, which is a good decision, and played there really for all my career since then, really, apart from a season out or two. Uh, and I went to Hena, so yeah, I played Even there. Even when you lived away from Even when I, So I lived in Litchfield for quite a long time. Still travel back? And travel back, yeah, because it just gets in your blood, and then playing with yeah. the same people and your mates and everything. But, so we had a. I mean, in those days, it was. You know, it was a good standard of cricket that we played in. And, well, we, we, we had spells in uh, Division 1A, which which was probably the equivalent to what the Premier League is. Yeah. This was the Derbyshire League? No, this, no this, not, was in this, the, this was in the Bassett yeah. uh, One Division season, 1A, yeah. Chesterfield, Marini, Steetley from Ovenier Works, at, works at Retford, uh, British Ropes, as they were then, Bright yeah, became yeah. Brighton. Yeah. So oh, good, some good, good cricket. Oh, yeah. oh, some and good at, cricket. at that stage, they got a paid professional as well. Did, all of did those that have one? No, no, not in those no. days. So what sort of players were you coming up against then? Well, it, Australia's New Zealanders were very common in yeah. those days, even then. Yeah, South um, Africans. Yeah. A lot, a lot of uh, the better players were picked up by companies and put on the payroll. Yeah. yeah. Uh, come and work for us. But you need you're gonna to have to play cricket off. It happened at football, yeah. rugby, yeah. well, whatever sport you play with really. Um depending on how interested the managing director was in sport, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. But we used to come up again a lot of the league players who played for the league side who have won this yeah. cup, this competition that they used to go into yeah. quite a few times, haven't they? Yeah. Uh, a lot of Steakley players, uh, Eric Martin, um, John John Lopes, mm, Lopes yeah. who all played county second team yeah. stuff yeah. Uh, for Knotts and for Derbyshire. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we, we used to come up against some really good players. Good players. Mm. What was that little um, left arm spinner that he'd left that well just before I got here that Bill Bill got? Ed. Uh, no. Uh, what was his name? Little chunky guy. Oh. Oh, oh I forgot his name. I don't know. Well, we've got Noddy Holder in there. Yeah, I was say, yeah, 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 he certainly wasn't involved. Then. You, 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 as, as a uh, watcher of Derbyshire, you will know. You be oh, looking. Fred Swarbrick. Uh, Fred Swarbrick. Oh, right. Yeah. Fred Swarbrick played. Yeah. Yeah. Swarbrick played. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah. Uh, the, it got interesting when they wanted to stop at every pub on the road back. <laughs> and that used to Have they still got a bus? No, uh, no they were in cars no, by then. No. They were in cars, but it didn't matter, they still went and got yeah, me. Yeah, So, oh, but you started a bit later. Well, I did, but interestingly enough, I went, I, I did a, I went to university. Uh, and then I actually went to work for British Coal Computing Division in Canning. Right. So a company called Compower. And we did all the IT, effectively, for British Coal. Uh, so I actually saw in, in the division that I was in, which was mining and technical. So we actually looked at all the pits. So when these guys were doing all the donkey work, we were doing all the computing. So when, skimming the we cream. were skimming the cream. <laughs> so when they, when they came up and they were doing all the time recording and things like that into little handheld devices, we were actually providing that to the management yeah. team on the top. So when you got into the song, was it still... It, still, it was a split then, yeah. I mean, I started playing in late 70s, early 80s, and it was probably like, then... Yeah, when when did the colliery close? <sighs> Good, isn't that? Is it... 70s, 70, 70, early 70s, I think. Right. Yeah. It think closed it a lot earlier yeah. than the rest of the pits yeah. did. Yeah. It, it closed on uh, exhaustion. Yeah. Was it? Yeah. So it, it seemed to have been mined. Yeah. yeah, they were there. I mean, you were all joining yeah. all, you know, because around here yeah, you've you got... Can, most of the collieries were into them, so you could, you could sort of set off... In, in my instance at Shirebrook, you could set off underground from Shirebrook and come up you could go one way to Bolsover all, all the way to the and then you could yeah. go the way to Thorsby. All the way to Thorsby. Yeah. And how did that, how did the closure impact the club? I don't think if, it, if at all. it didn't. I don't think no, it did. I think a lot of people were actually working in the mining industry, not at Blackwell at that stage. So I think, if I think it was also easier at that at the time that Blackwell closed. A lot of the guys went. Found jobs fairly easily yeah, because yeah. they were they were regardless of what what sort of uh, opinion they've got of, of miners and whatever they, they were pretty adaptable. Yeah, they were an adaptable race of people. I presume yeah. that there were other jobs in other. Pits. At that stage, yeah. there were. Yeah. There were jobs yeah. out of the pits. There were also jobs outside the industry. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so so, from a financial viewpoint, to the actual playing staff, if you like to call it that it probably didn't have much effect yeah, because yeah. they just got another job and carried yeah. on and carried on playing so you were playing for a colliery side but you didn't actually work at the colliery yeah, at that yeah. point it had started to sort of um, become more encompassing yeah. Of, yeah. of local people yeah. even those that didn't work in the in the yeah, mining industry yeah. Yeah. I, 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 question yeah. I've got for both of you I'm always interested to know that when I team of miners turns up to play uh, another team of miners, I suppose you've got you know, these tough blokes on either side, but did you ever come up against teams where you've got a team of miners but the other side were a little bit in awe of these tough, hard what, and like they, Physically in awe because they were, because they were tougher by tougher nature. Yeah. Yeah. Did, did that ever reveal yeah. itself in, or were you always playing? Like I think we were playing similar teams. sides, and a lot of a, the a lot of a lot of the uh, local cricket clubs, even it, the ones that dropped the colliery. Yeah, they were still actually came yeah, from, yeah, from, yeah, initially from, came yeah. from, from colliery yeah. background, and and a lot of coll colliers loved sport. Yeah, there were, you, there were there were three things that colliers talked about at snap time underground, right? Women. Yeah. <laughs> Drinking and sport. Yeah. That right. And if that's what you talked about. If, if you look at the, I mean, I've got the divisions, some of the historic stuff from 1940s. Yeah. So this is like the Division One in the Bassett War. So these were the sides: Faircroft Main, Warsop Main, Collier. Shire Ropes Colliery, Collier. Manton Colliery, yeah. Old Soul WM, Working Men's, yeah. Kiverton Park, Ollerton Colliery, Blackwell Colliery, Whitwell Colliery. Worksop, Crestwell Colliery, Bolsover Colliery, CWS Glassworks, Clipston Colliery, Mansfield Colliery, Hartill, so all Billsforth Colliery, yeah, seventy-five, good, yeah, good yeah. seventy-five, eighty percent of those. Even Glassworks would have been, yeah, related to it. Yeah. Oh yeah, doing yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, we're, we're, the, the Worksop teams were all affected by 
local collieries, yeah. there were people who were living where so who might have worked at the collieries. Yeah. And they could go and play for either, I suppose. But what yeah. were the rival rivalries like in terms of who, who were your closest rivals and were there any you most with? most uh, clubs had got sp specific ones who who rubbed one another up the wrong way, if you like. Still do. That. <laughs> when I was at Shardwick, it yeah, still do, yeah, yeah. to this day, same ones. Uh, when I first started at Shardwick, the first time I played cricket against Warsaw Main, Langworth Colliery, yeah. Thorsby Colliery, as a kid, bearing in mind I was probably 14 or 15 by that stage, I, I just stood there in amazement yeah. at uh, the sheer antagonism that they felt to one, towards one another. And where did that come from? I don't know really. It was obviously geographical. I mean, villages, villages which were close together, Sharbrook and Warsaw, for instance, yeah. uh, periodically there'd be a gang of people from Warsaw, young youths, yeah would come into Shibro one Saturday night, have a good scrap, and then what were left of them used to meander off back, <laughs> and vice versa, the other way. That, I mean, they loved it. They, that, they loved it. That's what they did. And these kind of enmities just continued. Yeah, they carried on through. into, they carried yeah, on into football, yeah, yeah. cricket, um, bowls, <laughs> whatever yeah. they played yeah. against one another. Shibro, yeah. Yeah. Shibro were a bit keen. So who's, who's the natural rivals today? So I mean, a lot of them have gone, to be honest, because I mean, bowls over were our closest. Bowls over were the biggest one. Sim and similar standard. Yeah. Bowls yeah. over were probably the one, and there's we no side there. We used yeah. to play a lot against so they, bowls over. There was some antagonism with that. Yeah, I think Clipston, no, it's Clipston's won Clipston, now. Yeah. That still is. Yeah, they. Uh, we used to have grass bowl. We used grass bowl was always interesting. Yeah. Mansfield Colliery. Colliery and Mansfield Elgin Rocks. They were interesting. They kind of, they go on. Yeah, they but that is more now not on the like the colliery work angle, it's just on the standard and competitiveness of the cricket, right. more so than actually the old heritage. Right. You've said that though, Phil. I think I think people who who played in that era mm. are more yeah, aggressive. Yes, yeah, they are. I, I, we are. We're more aggressive than than our younger, our younger, our younger element, element. Through, no. yeah. competitiveness. Um, they're not aggressive at all no. in the same manner that we used to be. No. And I'm not saying we were right. Mm. It was just the way it was. But we also had, you know, obviously the minor strike as well. Yes. That, which was like in the mix of all this. Well, I'll tell you what, we'll, we'll see yeah. another good place yeah. to pause. Two, yeah. two minor that, strike. That element of, of cricket and social history that, that, yeah, that yeah. collide. Oh, yeah, yeah. they do. Yeah, we'll, we'll, yeah. we'll come to that. Yeah, okay. we'll, we'll have a pause and we'll come back to that. But for now, uh, gents, thanks very much indeed.